This video is about the Alcatel Link Hub model number HH41 and how to configure it properly. This is an LTE Cat4 modem, which means it's 4G. Here's a picture of the modem with its included external antennas installed. And here's a picture of the modem as we're going to talk about it. It is easiest to open this modem by using a web browser. So if you're using Wi-Fi, then you have to log in on the Wi-Fi credentials, which are listed on the bottom of the modem. And if you're using an Ethernet cable, then you simply start up your browser and log into 192.168.1.1, and you'll get this screen that you see right here. Notice that it may be in the wrong language. It may not be in your language. Up here, the language is grayed out, but it's actually still available. So, for example, it could be in some other language. Portuguese or something. You can go up here and change it to whatever language you need it to be. In my case, it's English. And the login, the default login is admin. The login password is admin. I've changed mine, so mine's different. So I'm going to use my login. And once you log in, this is the home page you get. If you notice, we have categories here. We're at the home category. Services category does these things. Settings allows these changes, and system allows these changes. So let's go back to home for a moment. On their home, there's a setup wizard down here that you can use to reconfigure whatever you want to change. Out of the box, you don't really need any of this stuff. Everything works out of the box. So you simply plug in your uh, SIM card and then it wakes up and it finds a nearby tower and connects. This is all done automatically. You don't have to configure anything. Just turn the unit on, plug in your SIM card, and boom, you have a connection if you're within a cellular tower range. In my case, I live outside of a cell tower range, so that doesn't happen for me. Once it's connected, you can go here to your internet status, and it'll tell you your SIM card's ready and what kind of service you have, and the assignments that were done. If it's disconnected, you can click on Connect, unsuccessful because I'm not near a tower. There's other things we can do right now. We go to the LAN status. You notice it says LAN 1 is connected to something. It's connected to my desktop computer, which is making this video right now. I know that because the MAC address is this address. The IP address was assigned by the Link Hub and assigned this address. We go to the Wi-Fi status. Notice it's only 2.4 gigahertz, but it's all you need for being in an RV. I'm not worried about any massive download speeds because I'm just watching videos and checking the weather and checking my mail. So I changed this SSID to van. I allowed SSID broadcast to remain enabled. Security, I selected WPA2, and that's the address of the gateway. That's MAC address. We can change these parameters right here. I can change the SSID. I can change the Wi-Fi password right here. I choose to leave them the way they're set. So if I go back to advanced Wi-Fi settings, I can put in the country because that affects the power levels that are authorized and the channels. And IP isolation, I'm not sure yet. I believe that isolates the Wi-Fi users from the LAN users. I haven't proven that yet, so I'll just say I'm not sure at this time. And WPS, which is a scourge of the earth, you don't want to use WPS. At least they put a pin on it. But still, it's a very insecure way to connect to a router. And this is one of the reasons I don't fully trust this router as being a good barrier to the rest of the world. Under security items, you can get pin management. If you have a pin assigned to your SIM card, then you can change that. Here you can so you don't want anybody in the outside world trying to ping this router to find out what's going on. And here we have IP filters, MAC filters, and URL filters. In all these cases, you can either disable or blacklist that filter. MAC filters, you can either have a blacklist or a whitelist, which means only those on the list will be allowed. 
and the same way with the IP filter. You can have a blacklist or a whitelist. This is have somebody that's annoying you or some neighbor's trying to get in or something. You can always just set up a filter to get rid of them. And last but not least down here we have the NAT filter. So we've got the NAT functions, which is DMZ. I'm sure you've heard about it. I keep it turned off. I don't want people accessing any particular server or anything on my system. Same with UPnP. It's very dangerous. Keep it turned off. You don't absolutely need it. And then virtual server. I don't have any virtual servers set up. I don't want people accessing my servers on my network from the outside world. So that pretty much covers the settings the services inside. When I took the SIM card out of my phone and plugged it into this link hub, it generated this message because my provider, which is TrackPhone, recognized it's a different device. So it sent me this message and it's basically telling me something's been changed here. Here's the message itself. So if, if it's okay, then ignore this. Otherwise, you need to go back to your account and boot off where we just jumped onto your account. So you can receive messages that would normally go to whatever that SIM card was connected to. So we got inbox, outbox, draft, new message, and settings. The settings don't give you much to do here. I'm not going to talk about them. We also have call logs. You can get a call log for incoming calls, outgoing, outgoing calls, and missed calls. So if you want to check on what you missed, this is how you do it. Okay, the next thing is the system configuration over here. And here I'm going to black out this part because I don't want you reading my IMEI, my IMSI. But it gives all the system information about your link hub. And there's device management un underneath there. Which lets you change your password, your system settings, or I'll just look at them. Let's you change your password, let's you change your system settings, your time and language who your time server is. You can actually back up and restore it too. If you click back up, it'll go ahead and create a file and it'll put it on the download directory of whatever machine you're connected with. Then you can go ahead and move it from the downloads wherever you want it. Then later on, if you want to restore that same configuration, you just come in here, click on Browse, and it goes back out to your connected computer and allows you to browse to see whatever folder to find what you want to restore it with. So it gives you a quick restoral technique. TR-69, I don't know anything about it. I'm not going to talk about it. Don't use it. So you're on your own on that one. But notice it says no service up here. That's based on the fact that if I try to connect, there's no, you notice there's no service for the cell tower, LTE. But I also have if you look at this picture, I also have a WAN jack on the back of this modem and I have a Wi-Fi connection plugged in there. So it'd be treated as a wide area network if I lose the LTE signal. So I'm going to prove that by coming up here and I'm connected with this browser. I'm going to open up a new place to go, a new tab. I'm going to do a search. I'm going to go to YouTube, and you notice YouTube does, in fact, work properly. So I am connected. On the front panel, there's an internet status light, which is blue, which means I'm connected. So it knows I'm connected to the internet via the WAN. But yet up here it says no service, and that has to do with LTE. There's no LTE, there's no LTE signal. And for some reason, they don't change this to show it's active, but on the front panel, it says I have internet connectivity, which is true. I have it through the WAN port. So this pretty much covers how to use this particular device. There'll be another video on how I use a Wi-Fi repeater connected to this device to make it more functional. I can also take the LAN 1 port of this device back up and look at it. If I take the LAN 1 port of this device and connect it into a Mikrotik router, I can now have a very secure internet connection. This router is amazing and it's found at my YouTube channel. That YouTube channel 
was shown here a little bit earlier. Anyway, this section right here, this, there's 36 video lessons on how to use this Mikrotik router to get very good security for your network connectivity. So that concludes this lesson. I'll just give you an overview of how this thing works, how you configure it.